because I, I can't even talk. <coughs> oh shit. I. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a FAQ video because I did ask you guys on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter what questions you had for me and I wanted to see what you guys wanted to know so there are some personal questions and are some makeup questions so I just want to get through all of them and let's just get started so this question was asked a lot um, what made me get into makeup and when did I start so I get this question at work too um, when did I start doing makeup at what age honestly I love makeup from a young age i used to watch my mom get ready and if you guys follow me on instagram you know that my mom has a big birthmark and she used makeup to cover it up not so much as a i'm gonna cover up all my insecurities which in my mom's case she is insecure about the birthmark she doesn't want to be judged by it but to me it was always like a nice creative thing to see her cover it up and go out about go out with her day in high school i want to say i started dabbling into it like a lot of my first youtube videos were from when i was in high school i was like doing baby reviews and buying like maybelline stuff and anything from the drugstore elf all that good stuff uh crown brushes bh cosmetics coastal scents all of those brands before i actually up to my makeup game. I want to say about six years ago is when I actually started and then I want to say about four years ago maybe even I want to say my junior year of high school is when I actually started to kind of really be serious about it like I told myself I wanted to do makeup but I knew financially in Hawaii it's not so much of a career unless you like invest so much in it and I decide that I want to finish school and then we'll see from there so I am in school I am doing makeup at Sephora so I hope that answers that question so the next question is who got you into makeup um basically my mom I did watch a lot of YouTube too like Michelle Fun, uh It's Judy Time, uh Dulce Candy uh, makeup by Lena Baby, all of them, Fafinet, they kind of inspired me to do makeup, like I was playing around with it, they did a lot of reviews, and then I stopped watching a lot of YouTube videos, and I started just playing with it on my own, using whatever, like, makeup products my mom had, and then once I finally got a job, I started investing in my own. Alright, so the next question is, how to be great with makeup like I am? So, it's not really a question. I think practice with everything in life. If you want to get good at something, you just have to practice. At first, I was pretty shitty at makeup. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, yeah, and just watching a lot of people do makeup. And then when I got hired at Sephora, I did a lot of learning as well from my senior artists, from my peers, from the trainers, the brand reps. Um, I think within the two years I've been in Sephora, I grew as an artist, so I always tell people it's not, oh, you're so good, it's you must have put so much time and effort and practice into learning to becoming so good. So the next question is, what do you recommend for oily skin? This question is something I get asked a lot, so please listen because I explain a lot. Now, this question is really hard because... If I don't see your skin, if I can't touch and feel and assess your skin, I can just give you whatever product. You go to Sephora or MAC or the drugstore and you try it and it doesn't work out for you. Um, and then it, I'm blamed for it. So I always tell people, first assessing, how oily are you? So within the period of time of the day, you take a shower in the morning or when you wake up, you get ready, you wash your face. After you wash your face, how many hours after you wash your face um, do you get oily? So for me, I usually get oily about midday. So in contrary, my skin may be oily midday, but during the day, like during when I started and woke up and had my day started, I was more normal. So my skin type is more normal combination. 
Now, with oily skin, you want to assess that as well. Are you oily or are you dehydrated? Two different things. So, I have clients and I have people who tell me, oh, I'm super oily, I don't wear a moisturizer. Well, in contrary, you should be wearing a moisturizer. With dehydrated skin, you can feel it and you can see it. So, there's a lot of texture with dehydrated skin, like especially like... In this area you can feel it if you feel that your makeup's not going on really well and smooth no matter what primer you use your makeup just still goes on really patchy it could be because you don't have moisture in your skin so a lot of people assume that when they're oily their skins are already producing moisture why should they put more moisturizer into their skin this is what I learned at Sephora when you strip your skin of its moisture it's gonna overproduce oil so when you don't put moisturizer on your body is signaling your oil receptors or oil whatever's to produce more oil if i wake up and i don't put moisturizer on and then i try to put makeup on my skin is gonna look and feel dehydrated your makeup's gonna most likely turn patchy and with that whatever state your skin is in so if you have texture if you have like dry patches if you are dry or if you're oily and you don't take care of your skin before applying makeup your makeup is most likely gonna look like that when it comes to products for oily skin i always ask these questions first before i go on to uh, giving product because I don't want to give you something that's not going to work out unless I actually can give you something different based off of the questions and skin concerns that I ask you. And I know it sounds really hard but it honestly is everybody should be wear wearing a moisturizer oily dry combination normal to dry sensitive everybody should be wearing a moisturizer if you are going to be putting makeup on you want to wear a moisturizer. Next question is, how do you decide what kind of primer to use? Honestly, again, based off your skin type, if you are dry, if you're oily, if you're combination, if you have pores. Um, also, when it comes to primers, you got to keep in mind your formula of foundation. Like, is your foundation water-based? Is your foundation more dimethicone-based? Anything with the slip, like Porefessional or the Smashbox one, I believe that one has the silicone and dimethicone in it. Don't quote me on this, but that's something that I learned at work. If I give you something for pores, and I give you a foundation like Too Faced, Born This Way, that one is a water-based foundation. So, if you are oily, or if you use a oil base or dimethicone base or something with a slip in your primer, your foundation is not going to look right because oil and water don't mix. I always tell people, Go based off of your skin type and what foundation you're going to be wearing. I like to go for more dimethicone ones some days and some days I would rather go for water-based ones. My two favorite primers at the moment are the Makeup Forever Smoothing Primer and that's for when I'm super oily. And then the Becca First Light Primer is really nice, the purple one that really hydrates the skin. Right, next question. Why does my primer end up rolling off my skin and look like eraser shavings? Your skin doesn't need it. I've noticed this especially with clients who want to buy something super mattifying and then they start putting it on their skin and then it rolls off because their skin is not oily enough to use it. For example, Becca Ever Matte Primer, that one is meant for super oily skin. I am normal to oily. My skin, my nose gets oily, but everywhere else is more normal. So, if I use that in my nose area, you want to make sure you pat it in. And if I put it on, like, my cheeks, it'll ball up. It'll look like eraser shavings. Next question is, when should I put my sunscreen on? Before or after moisturizer, does it not matter? It does matter. So, sunscreen is always going to be your last step in your skincare. When you wake up in the morning, you wash your face with your cleanser. You then use a treatment, essence, toner as your treatment step then you do your moisturizer then you do your protectant with your moisturizer of course you do your eye cream in that same step area but you would like to do your sunscreen after if you don't want a liquid based sunscreen we do sell powder sunscreen at sephora next question did your nose piercing hurt? Actually, this is my second nose piercing. So the first time I got my nose pierced, I got it with a hoop and it got infected. So I took it out, let it heal, and then I did it again with the stud first. And then I did my hoop after. I want to use Dip Brow, but it always comes on dark. Dip Brow is something you need to practice and you need to use less of. So what I tell people is you take a little bit out of 
the pot first, put it on the back of your hand, and use whatever's on your hand. How are you so confident in yourself? Mm. Honestly, I'm very insecure. I just put up a front. Actually, no, that's a bad thing to tell you guys. I, I actually, I want to say I'm confident, but at the same time, I'm still very insecure. Um, but I, I've learned not to take shit from people, and a lot of people in high school used to be like, oh, you're such a bitch, and I would say, well, I'm not gonna have you bully me, and I'm not gonna have you talk mad shit about me to my face. If you're gonna say it to my face, say it to my face, but if you're gonna, you gotta be mindful of me retaliating back, because I'm not just gonna take it. I grew up with a single parent and an older sister, so... I was taught from my mom not to take shit from anybody. You gotta defend yourself, even if that means you gotta look like the bad person. When it comes to being confident, I had to kind of build it up. At first, I was very insecure. I was, you know, I'm very insecure about my weight, but I kind of just live with it, and I do something about it, so it may make people uncomfortable, but at the same time, I'm still able to be comfortable in the skin that I'm in and sometimes you just gotta take risks so that's all I can say this is gonna be the last question a lot of you have been asking how I got my job at Sephora and someone did ask how do you get a job at Sephora so if you want to be a makeup artist with Sephora keep in mind you would have to have makeup experience at a different counter it can't be I freelance and I do makeup on the side that's not count as experience so what I tell people is come in apply start off as like a cashier or something and in your plan of growth they call it a p4d um, plan for development when you have that talk with your supervisor you then explain like oh I want to become a makeup artist or I want to be a color consultant I want to be a skin consultant I want to be in fragrance or an ops or recovery just keep in mind though you're not gonna start off as an actual makeup artist like from the get-go from when you get hired you gotta understand like cash register and brand um, and Sephora values and all that kind of stuff. So I hope these answered your guys questions. Don't forget to send me more if you have any, the, um, any more questions but I hope the foundation questions helped you guys all a lot. Keep in mind skincare is key to making your makeup look flawless. Trust me when I say your skin taking care of your skin is more important than buying the newest foundation honestly. Um, it's going to thank you in the long run. You are going to look great when you're old if you take care of your skin. And yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you again for watching. And if you have any more questions, leave them down below. And I'll try my best to comment back and answer them. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Jennifer Dela Cruz. Comment, rate, and subscribe. And always stay beautiful.